Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hope you're doing really, really well. Um, thanks for all the love and support on Cigarette Light. Uh, look, I'm rocking the merch. Look at that. Happy days. If you want your own merch, get it now, because it's going to be gone by midway through January. So, you want some? Get some now. Um, this will be one of your last chances to grab the merch. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about how I wrote the song and how I produced it. I'm going to be breaking down the file. I've got Reaper in front of me. Um, obviously, we're one week away from the reverie, so I thought this was an appropriate time to do this. So, let's head on over to Reaper and talk about what's going on. Let's go. Right, so I'm over here at Reaper now. Um, we're looking at what's going on. Um, this is the project file. It's pretty big. I think this is because this is the only project I've done solely in Reaper. It is most definitely the biggest project of any of them. So that's pretty cool. Um, so let's talk about what's going on here. So initially we start out with these guitars played um, through a, a vibrato pedal into my amplifier, uh, which is mic'd up with this microphone stereo pair, um, so it's this microphone, it's not this exact microphone, but it's close to, it's currently not on my amplifier because I've got a 57 on there because I've been starting to enjoy the 57 more, I don't know, it's, it's a weird time for my mic preferences, you know, I uh, used to never catch me dead putting a dynamic mic on an amplifier and now it's kind of what I like, so yeah, um, it's my Gothic SG on the neck pickup into my Marshall Origin 5C, and this is what it sounds like. We just start out with this beautiful um, left-right verbed-out guitar. They're called verb guitar in the um, in the notes because they're only here for the first bit, and they sound really beautiful. So that's why they're called that, and uh, they've got more verb on, obviously, clues in the name. There's only one effect on this that's in the door, and that's uh, some verb, and that's really nice. And then we come in with just the guitars and a vocal. Sat in my garret, I looked out. And it's the intro vocal, so my vocal chain is just really simple, really, really simple. We have a gate running into some um, EQ, running into clang how uh, compressor, not very, uh, the lead vocal is different to the intro vocal because that one has more compression and less reverb. This one's got a lot of reverb and delay down on the intro vocal bus down at the bottom. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we just start out with these. And then halfway through, Fami pad in along with bass. Such a pair. Beautiful. Um, it, it, Fami, the synthesizer is just beautiful. It sounds like a Juno just broken. Uh, sounds like what someone threw a, a Juno off a building and put it in a gunmetal casing, and now it's in my studio, so I love it. Um, sounds like that. And then going into the chorus, Hand me instantly we have these uh, left right Hand me doubles. Lighter. Still on the intro vocal, it just sounds really pretty. And then we've got real violin and viola. So two violin tracks, two viola tracks played by me uh, using, sorry, using that beautiful, those beautiful instruments up there. I was feeling a little festive. Obviously, we're one week away from Christmas-ish, right? Well, no, when I'm recording this, we're one week away from Christmas. It's going to be nearly Christmas when this comes out. Um, we've got tinsel on the violin and viola. Look at that, us feeling festive. Uh, that's the only bit of decoration in this room, so... Hi-ho. We're not doing too badly, could be worse. Um, but yeah, violin and viola, just play these. So pretty. Um, not the most incredible sounding on their own. They sound a bit naff on their own because of how I've EQ'd them. But in the mix, Hand me a cigarette lighter. They make so much sense. Come, we shall burn this town down. And that bass, dong, 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 dong. Pretty cool. The bass is done with my, um, my Ibanez Talman that's currently out of action because it's set on fire. Um, we're fixing that. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm going to have a bass again soon and not have to use other basses because, 
yeah, that one's that one's amazing. And I actually, well, I don't know how it happened. The chip set on fire. So yeah, no more bass for me at the moment. But again, the guitars have now swapped to the main rhythm guitar tone. Less verb. That's the only difference. It's just broken chords at the moment, nothing fancy. And then coming out of this, we have probably the coolest part of the song. This was meant to be a guitar solo here. Synth solo. Um, the synth lead, which you'll see dotted around throughout this, is literally some saws with, um, it's from Decent Sampler. Literally saws with a low pass filter on them. <laughs> it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Oh. And then under here, we're trying to keep everything incredibly simple. So the guitars just do this like little... They end and then we have this... Stabs. And the vibrato pedal is still on, as you can hear, just giving them that warble. A lot of people thought it was chorus. It's not chorus, it's vibrato. And then we have this amazing synth patch. That's the thing about the Fami, I'll never find those again, so they've been used, they are the cigarette lighter patch, and I'll never get those back, so that's whatever, I hope. <laughs> Who cares? But the bass sounds really nice through this, um, and yeah, again, they're just stabbing at it. And then we go into this verse, and I absolutely love this, this is one of the coolest parts, is when we have this. On the Fami, just bouncing ear to ear. Suddenly in your left ear. A lot of automation on the panning for this whole thing. Uh, synth pad here. Again, that's just me sat holding a chord and then like bouncing the, um, I've tuned the, um, the filter so that when I turn up the resonance, it'll bounce to the correct root note. So we have that doom ka, doom ka, doom ka. It's really cool. And then we bounce the, um, the offbeat um, like thing around. Uh, again, we're still with the uh, SG at this point. Um, the vocal doubles stay in, but I add in this off for every order. My ears ringing, it's unfortunate they didn't escape. So when I go up the octave on the uh, verse, we just drop it down, fill out the bottom end. It's all about filling stuff out here. And then the synth lead does this little like. Very cool. And then there's this NS10 patch that just does that. Very cool. Um, obviously I don't own an NS10, that's a digital synthesizer. But the coolest part of this entire song is when we drop into this chorus. We have this. You can hear that little... It's just moving the oscillator, it's incredibly cool. I love my, my Fami. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we hit this chorus. First big thing is when we listen to... Hand me a cigar it has taken us a minute and 23 seconds to get vocal harmony. Uh, but finally... Cigarette beautiful. Um, also, we've swapped guitars. That's not my Gothic SG. That is my uh, Esquire that I currently don't have. Um, Sastra has that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sastra currently has the Esquire. It's got some problems with it at the moment I need to fix. But... Um, there's nothing like a bare knuckle P90 that is way too hot for uh, any um, good, sensible um, amp to cope to the point that I don't think I'm using any pedals, maybe a bit of boost, but that's the natural dis distortion coming out of my Origin 5C, so. Yeah, because tube, tube amps don't go well with that guitar unless you want distortion, then they go really well. Um, you can't get a clean sound tone with that guitar. I've tried and failed. It's always edge of breakup or a bit more, <laughs> normally a bit more. But um, if you want any sort of volume, it's got to have some sort of distortion. I'm yet to be able to find an amp that copes comfortably with giving that uh, a clean tone. But it works incredibly well here. And drums, we just hit it off immediately with Stephen Slate drums. I love Stephen Slate uh, The Stephen Slate drum... Uh, synth is or sampler is incredibly useful because I played all these on a digital kit um, because I knew I'd need some drums at some point so I thought let's get ahead and make some drum samples anyway long story short I now have drum samples um, 
some drum grooves and that I just put on um, MIDI uh, because I really struggle with programming drums because I'm a musician, not a not a computer technician, so I don't know, take that how you will. But this does this and it sounds really cool. Perfect drums for this. I don't, wasn't planning that, but <laughs> came out whatever. Um, then we got this lead. There's something you'll notice. Uh, at this point, I was really into soloing on my synthesizers. So this is a really synth-based song. I think it's probably the most synth-based, even though you can't hear a lot of the synthesizers. You can hear like a couple bits, but it's like, it sounds more guitar-y, but it really isn't. Now for the coolest part of the entire song, we drop down into the bridge. Again, left monitor on the guitars, sounds so nice. Um, and then we have these incredibly lush um, vocals that the reverb trails trail for, throughout most of the next chorus. It sounds like you're. God damn it! It sounds like you're in a warehouse and you just hear. Ah, oh, it's amazing. Again, it's just three vocal tracks stacked, um, and it's me. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, very cool stuff. And then um, again, we've got this NS10 thing I'm calling synth fade. That does that. Very cool. Uh, we've got these synth pads, Fami that bounce monitors halfway through. And we just have these guitars doing these little like stabby things in the left monitor, which is pretty cool. I really like um, these. And the right monitor is just like long, big, lush chords. It's really nice. And then we move on to the final chorus, which just starts with this. She said, and again, we now have more vocal harmony. All of the red things are vocals. So here, just. She said, hand me your cigarette lighter. That's all the chorus. So this is double chorus. So for the first chorus, we just have that. Hand me your cigarette But for the second lighter, one. Honey, come let's burn this town down. She just looked like a viper, but I wasn't. If I just solo out these ones. A viper, I was enthralled by that sound. Incredibly beautiful. If I just, if we just isolate this top. Viper, but I was enthralled by that sound. I'm frying it so hard, I'm, I'm nearly dying. I think I sang that line like so many times to try and get it right. As you can see, it's nearly all one take, apart from there's a little cut here. Her looks were that of a viper. But it's so distorted and gritty in the throat, so this was actually really difficult to record for me. But I was enthralled by that sound. Hand me your cigarette lighter, honey. Also, with me being a natural baritone and that being more in an alto's range, it was quite difficult. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I write all my music incredibly high. I just clearly hate myself. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool parts here. All but I was in throat. Especially these last two notes up here at the top octave. It is incredibly high. Um, oh, uh, oh, That's the note I'm singing, but I'm not. That's my falsetto version. It's very high. Uh, that's that's the same octave. You wouldn't believe it. Uh, it's very, very high. Um, so yeah, we're singing that. Underneath, again, uh, for the bridge, we swap back to the uh, Gothic SG. I forgot to mention that. Um, but here we've got... P90, once again, look at that. I love a P90, I do. Uh, don't know if you could tell. Um, but yeah, then we hit back. Hand me your cigarette. Again, big drums, big bass. Hand me your cigarette. More soloing on the synthesizer. Um, 
obviously we have, um, that's only for the first bit, but when we come out of it, we then have this track here, which is the synth melody. We're mimicking what we did earlier, but with less delay. Uh, so it just like bounces a little. And it's again bouncing ear to ear slightly. Marginal panning. Um, and then it all drops away here. With the and then it all goes. And uh, this outro wasn't meant to exist, but I used the original, the beginning. I copy and pasted the beginning, but uh, swapped the tracks so the right one at the beginning's in the left ear and the left one at the beginning's in the left ear, so. It's just like a completion of the song because um, what started the song was the left ear. Um, what was in the bridge was the left ear, but by the end of the song, what starts it is in the right ear. It's just a full circle thing. I think it's really nice. Um, the production isn't that crazy. Um, uh, the drums all are EQ'd slightly. Um, the, we've got buses with reverb and delay for all the vocals. My standard vocal chain, really. Um, backing Vox obviously has insane ones, but uh, that's different to all the others. But um, yeah, and it just, it's really nice. Um, as I say, this is like the only project I've done solely in Reaper. So this is the only project I can really show you much of with it actually being interesting because I normally do all my vocals in Reaper and then um, either pia piano was is normally done in Pro Tools and then I steal the stems and then it's all kind of put together in Cubase. So it's all <laughs> so confusing. But yeah, I did this entire project in Reaper, including mastering. So it's, yeah, it's a good, it's a good one to be able to show you because um, it's different to all the others. So um, yeah, that's kind of how I made it. Um, obviously we're not gonna see the mastering chain because that's a little secret of mine is my mastering chain. But thanks so much for watching, right? It's really nice to see that people actually care about what I'm making and obviously we're doing really, really well um, with um, all of the stuff. Thank you so much to all of you who've been here since September when I released Faded Polaroid. Um, I think we're nearing a thousand Spotify streams on that. So if you would go listen to that, it would really be amazing if we could get that song to a thousand streams. I really appreciate you all watching. Uh, we've obviously got The Reverie coming out in a week and obviously this is why this was an appropriate time to do it. We're a bit between songs at the moment, waiting for the next release. And I kind of wanted to round out the Cigarette Lighter saga with this. Um, so this is a little interesting stuff. We've got more videos on the way, more music very shortly coming down the line. So subscribe and go follow me on Instagram. Um, I post then very regularly about what's going on. You, if you follow me on Instagram, you are the first to know about what is coming up uh, in the future. So yeah, thank you all so very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one and have a very Merry Christmas when it comes. So yeah. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.